What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this tutorial, we're going over how to match different cameras in DaVinci Resolve 17. And some need to know techniques while shooting and also in DaVinci Resolve to make sure you get a seamless match every time. So while matching cameras can seem a little overwhelming at first, I promise you once you get a feel for the overall workflow, it's not only extremely easy, but instantly you know how to match any RA to any Sony or any Blackmagic to any Panasonic and so on and so forth. So the first piece of this process to get the most out of DaVinci Resolve, it was to shoot in log or raw. Now it doesn't mean you can't match your shots if you're not shooting in log or raw, but I highly suggest shooting in log or raw because it gives DaVinci Resolve a lot more information to work with. If I was shooting in standard with my GH5 like I am right now, it'd be smarter for me to try to match the Black Magic to the GH5 instead of me trying to match the GH5 to the Black Magic. So let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve and from there everything will start to make a lot of sense. All right, so I have a multicam here and inside the multicam I have two clips. So I'm gonna go into the multicam by right clicking and clip open in timeline. I personally like the color grade from inside of the multicam, especially if I only have two shots like this in an interview, a two cam interview. It can be really easy just to go ahead and color these shots inside of the multicam. And that way you can just go ahead and cut back and forth once you edit and they're already colored. So from here, if I go ahead and disable the angle two, uh, my angle one is the Black Magic 6K and my angle two is the GH5 shooting in V-Log. Uh, and you can see I've got B-Raw here on the bottom and our MP4 from the GH5. If I jump over to the color tab, there'll be a couple things that we want to do first. And one is we want to go ahead and work on uh, our main hero shot. Now, since we'll want to get the GH5 to look like our black magic, uh, let's go ahead and mute the GH5 and just go ahead and color our black magic as we would normally. Uh, so in the color tab, if I go ahead and make a couple new nodes with Alt S, Alt S, and then in this last note, I'll go ahead and apply our LUT. And I was using the Black Magic in Gen 5 Color Science. So I'm just going to come down to LUT and then Black Magic Design and then Black Magic Film Gen 5 uh, to extended video. Boom. And that already looks pretty good. Uh, it could be a little bit more white balanced. And so we'll go ahead and make our corrections here because, again, to match our shot, we'll need to get this shot in a good place. Uh, that way we know exactly what we're trying to match to. And so if I go to this first node and come over to our Temp and Tint and Take this to the left, cooling it just slightly. And I like that. And then in the second note, I'm just going to add a little bit more contrast. So I'm just going to come to the curves and make a dot towards the bottom. Actually, I'll just go ahead and click on her hair in a dark spot. So we'll just go ahead and get that spectrum there and know that that's exactly what we've got. And then I'll just bring this down. Until I get something that I'm pleased with. Maybe about there, and then we can bump these highlights up. And I'll pull this down a little further in the shadow spectrum. Deactivate. Yeah, that looks solid. Another thing I'll do on the same node with the contrast is pull down the mid-tone details a little bit just to make the shot a little bit softer. Give her a little bit more softness. And I like that. Leave that there. And then we can come over to our GH5 shot. Uh, but first, we'll go ahead and right click on this and hit grab still. That way, we'll have a still uh, here in our gallery. And we can actually side by side the two shots and compare them visually and actually compare them in the scopes uh, to make sure uh, that we get a spot on uh, match. So if we come to the edit and we'll turn back on angle two, now we've got our angle two. And here with our GH5 shot, we'll make a couple new nodes with Alt S, Alt S. And then in the first one, we're going to add a color space transform, which is a tool you guys have probably seen me use before. I used it in uh, our drone matching shot to match our drone to a Blackmagic uh, camera. So if we go ahead and slide this color space transform onto our first node, we can start turning this Panasonic color science into Blackmagic color science. So all you have to do is in the input color space, Click this drop down and then come down and tell DaVinci Resolve what camera this is and what this footage is. And so in this situation, it is Panasonic V Gamut because it was using a Panasonic in a V Log. And then if we come down to Gamma, we can come down to Panasonic V Log. And you could see that if you're using Fuji or DJI even uh, or Sony, you have those options as well. Uh, so this is a great place to look. And so if I come down to Panasonic 
vlog. I like the way it looks actually, but we still need to come down to the output color space and tell DaVinci Resolve what kind of color science we want it to be. So if we come down here to Black Magic Wide Gamut Gen 4 or 5, and then come down with the output gamma to Film Gen 5, now we pretty much have this as if it came out of a Black Magic camera. Now, not exactly, but DaVinci Resolve has amazing color science and amazing tools to get it as close as possible. So if we come down here to our last node, we can add our LUT just like we did with our Black Magic footage. So if we right click, go to LUT, and then come up to Black Magic Design, and then down to Gen 5 Film to Extended Video. And all we really need to do is bring down a good bit of this contrast and probably add a little warmth. So if I make a dot here at the bottom of the curves and start bringing this down, maybe one up here as well, start bringing this down. Now we're getting a lot closer. One thing I am noticing is there's a lot more warmth in the shadows of the black magic, which I'm not a fan of. So I'm gonna come back to the black magic shot uh, by disabling our second angle and then come back to the color tab and one thing I'm going to do in this node before the LUT is I'm going to come to our log wheels. I'm going to take our shadows and go towards the cool side. Just slightly, and then I'll move that range up. And maybe even move these shadows down a little bit more. Yeah, that looks nice. We move these curves up just to soften our face a little bit more. We bring these highlights up a tad. And if we grab a still of this here, we can delete this other one so we don't get confused. Now we come back to this shot. Now we're already looking a lot closer. And if I go to the color tab, hit the side by side, and now we can see both this shot and our new one. Uh, we just need a little bit more warmth in the midtones, and we'll have a very similar shot. And we can see that even in the scopes. As I scroll across this in the scopes, it's almost identical. Uh, obviously, they're two different angles, so they're slightly you know, different from left to right. Uh, but you see that we're seeing a lot of the same region and information, uh, which is awesome. Uh, so if I come over here to the color wheels and go to the gamma and... Actually, let's do this in the log wheels, just so we don't get too destructive. Yeah, so in the log wheels, in the midtones, if I move this towards, yes, the orange a little bit more, and then I'm going to move these midtones down in shade. And then one thing I'm seeing is a little purple as well. So I'm going to go to the tint and move this a little slightly over. Yeah, that's looking a lot more similar. And then in the shadows, I'm going to bump a little warmth in the shadows as well. Actually, I can just lower the range. Yeah. I love it. Maybe a little bit more to the yellow. And even a little less contrast. I like that. That's looking really good, except we need maybe a little bit more. I'm seeing a little blue in the highlights of this shot. And so let's move a little bit more blue into the highs. How do you see your jacket matching a little bit better? Let me reset the highlights and come back to the blue. We'll move the range down a little, and yeah, that's looking really nice. That's a pretty stinking good match. I'm pretty happy with that, uh, and I think, you know, I could bump a little bit more blues into the highlights, but overall, I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Looks beautiful. And so I hope this helped you guys. If it did help you guys, make sure to go down there and maybe click that like button. It could it could do great things for, for me, the channel, even yourself, who knows? If you didn't like the video, maybe just click the like button anyway. I would really appreciate it.
And of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. And feel free to subscribe if you like videos on DaVinci Resolve. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.